the path of purification, Visuddhimagga, or Badanta Charya Buddha Gosa, published by Buddhist Publication Society, Kandy, Sri Lanka. Part 2. Concentration, Samadhi. Namo tasa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasa Namo tasa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasa Namo tasa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasa Chapter 3 Taking a meditation subject. Extracts passages 103 to 133. 103. However, the meditation subject that is suitable to the temperament has not been cleared up in all its aspects yet. This will become clear automatically when those in the following list are treated in detail. Now it was said above and he should apprehend from among the forty meditation subjects one that suits his own temperament. Here the exposition of the meditation subject should be first understood in these ten ways. 1. As to enumeration. 2. As to which bring all the excess and which absorption. 3. As to the kinds of jhana. Four, as to surmounting. 5. As to extension and non-extension. 6. As to object. 7. As to play. 8. As to apprehending. 9. As to condition. 10. As to suitability to temperament. Hearing. As to enumeration. It was said above. From among the 40 meditation subjects, Herein, the forty meditation subjects are these. Ten kasinas, ten kinds of foulness, ten recollections, four divine abidings, four immaterial states, one perception, one defining. Herein, the ten kasinas are these. Earth kasina, water kasina, fire kasina, air kasina. Blue Cassina, Yellow Cassina, Red Cassina, White Cassina, Light Cassina, and Limited Space Cassina. The ten kinds of foulness are these the bloated, the livid, the festering, the cut up, the gnawed, the scattered, the hacked and scattered, the bleeding, the worm infested, and a skeleton. The ten kinds of recollection are these. Recollection of the Buddha, the enlightened one. Recollection of the Dhamma, the law. Recollection of the Sangha, the community. Recollection of virtue. Recollection of generosity. Recollection of deities. Recollection of mindfulness of death. Mindfulness occupied with the body, mindfulness of breathing, and recollection of peace. The four divine abidings are these, loving kindness, compassion, gladness, and equanimity. The four immaterial states are these, the base consisting of boundless space, the base consisting of boundless consciousness, the base consisting of nothingness, and the base consisting of neither perception nor non-perception. The one perception is a perception of repulsiveness in nutriment. The one defining is a defining of the four elements. This is how the exposition should be understood as to enumeration, as to which bring access only and which absorption. The eight recollections, accepting mindfulness occupied with the body and mindfulness of breathing, the perception of repulsiveness in nutriment and the defining of the four elements, 
are ten meditation subjects that bring access only. The others bring absorption. This is as to which bring access only and which absorption. As to the kind of jhana, among those that bring absorption, the ten kasinas, together with mindfulness of breathing, bring all four jhanas. The ten kinds of foulness together with mindfulness occupied with the body bring the first jhana. The first three divine abidings bring three jhanas. The fourth divine abiding and the four immaterial states bring the fourth jhana. This is as to the kind of jhana. As to surmounting, there are two kinds of surmounting. That is to say, surmounting of factors and surmounting of object. Herein, there is surmounting of factors in the case of all meditation subjects that bring three and four jhanas, because the second jhana, etc., have to be reached in those same objects by surmounting the jhana factors of applied thought and sustained thought and so on. Likewise, in the case of the fourth divine abiding, for that has to be reached by surmounting joy in the same object as that of loving kindness and so on. But in the case of the four immaterial states, there is surmounting of the object, for the base consisting of boundless space has to be reached by surmounting one or other of the first nine casinas, and the base consisting of boundless consciousness have respectively to be reached by surmounting space and so on. With the rest, there is no surmounting. This is as to surmounting. As to extension and non-extension, only the ten casinas among these forty meditation subjects need to be extended, for it is within just so much space as one is intent upon with the casina that one can hear sounds with the divine ear element, see visible objects with the divine eye, and know the minds of other beings with the mind. Mindfulness occupied with the body and the ten kinds of foulness need not be extended. Why? Because they have a definite location and because there is no benefit in it. The definiteness of their location will become clear in explaining the method of development. If the latter are extended, it is only a quantity of corpses that is extended and there is no benefit. And this is said in answer to the question of Sopaka. Perception of visible forms is quite clear, blessed one. Perception of bones is not clear, source untraced. For here the perception of visible forms is called quite clear in the sense of extension of the sign, while the perception of bones is called not quite clear in the sense of its non-extension. But the words, I was intent upon this whole earth with the perception of a skeleton are said of the manner of appearance to one who has acquired that perception. For just as in the emperor Dhammasoka's time, the Karavika bird uttered a sweet song when he saw its own reflection in the looking glass walls all round and perceived Karavikas in every direction. So the elder Singala Pitar thought, when he saw the sign appearing in all directions through his acquisition of the perception of a skeleton, that the whole earth was covered with bones. If that is so, that is what is called the measurelessness of the object of jhana produced on fullness contradicted. It is not contradicted, for one man apprehends the sign in the large bloated corpse or skeleton, another in a small one. In this way, the jhana of the one has a limited object, and of the other, a measureless object. Or alternatively, 
with a measureless object is said of it referring to one who extends it, seeing no disadvantage in doing so, but it need not be extended because no benefit results. The rest need not be extended likewise. Why? When a man extends the sign of in breaths and out breaths, only a quantity of wind is extended, and it has a definite location, the nose tip. So it need not be extended because of the disadvantage and because of the definiteness of the location. And the divine abidings have living beings as the object. When a man extends the sign of these, only the quantity of living beings would be extended and there is no purpose in that. So that also need not be extended. When it is said, Intent upon one quarter with his heart, endued with loving kindness, etc. That is said for the sake of comprehensive inclusion. For it is when a man develops it progressively by including living beings in one direction, by one house, by two houses, etc., that he is said to be intent upon one direction, not when he extends the sign. And there is no counterpart sign here that he might extend. Also, the state of having a limited or measureless object can be understood here according to the way of inclusion too. As regards the material states as object, space need not be extended since it is the mere removal of the casina, materiality, for that should be brought to mind only as a disappearance of the casina. If he extends it, nothing further happens, and consciousness need not be extended, since it is a state consisting in an individual essence, and it is not possible to extend a state consisting in an individual essence. The disappearance of consciousness need not be extended, since it is mere non-existence of consciousness and the base consisting of neither perception nor non-perception as object need not be extended, since it too is a state consisting in an individual essence. The rest need not be extended, because they have no sign, for it is a counterpart sign that would be extendable and the object of the recollection of the Buddha, etc., is not a counterpart sign. Consequently, there is no need for extension there. This is as to extension and non-extension. As to object, of these 40 meditation subjects, 22 have counterpart signs as object. That is to say, the 10 casinas the ten kinds of fullness, mindfulness of breathing, and mindfulness occupied with the body. The rest do not have counterpart signs as object. Then twelve has states consisting in individual essences as object. That is to say, eight of the ten recollections accept mindfulness of breathing and mindfulness occupied with the body. The perception of repulsiveness in nutriment, the defining of the elements, the base consisting of boundless consciousness, and the base consisting of neither perception nor non-perception, and 22 have counterpart signs as object, that is to say, the 10 casinas, the 10 kinds of foulness, mindfulness of breathing, and mindfulness occupied with the body while the remaining six have not-so-classifiable objects. Then eight have mobile objects in the early stage, though the counterpart is stationary, that is to say, the festering, the bleeding, the worm-infested, mindfulness of breathing, the water casina, the fire casina, the air casina, and in the case of the light casina, the object, consisting of a circle of sunlight, etc. The rest have immobile objects. 
This is as to object, as to plain. Here the twelve, namely the ten kinds of foulness, mindfulness occupied with the body, and perception of repulsiveness in nutriment, do not occur among deities. These twelve and mindfulness of breathing do not occur in the Brahma world, but none except the four immaterial states occur in the immaterial becoming, all occur among human beings. This is as to plain. As to apprehending, here the exposition should be understood according to the scene, the touch, and the herd. Herein, these nineteen, that is to say, nine casinas, omitting the air casina, and the ten kinds of foulness must be apprehended by the scene. The meaning is that in the early stage, their sign must be apprehended by constantly looking with the eye. In the case of mindfulness occupied with the body, the five parts ending with skin must be apprehended by the scene and the rest by the herd, so its object must be apprehended by the scene and the herd. Mindfulness of breathing must be apprehended by the touch, the air casino by the scene and the touch, the remaining eighteen by the herd, the divine abiding of equanimity and the four immaterial states are not apprehendable by a beginner, but the remaining thirty-five are. This is as to apprehending. As to condition of these meditation subjects, nine casinas, omitting the space casina, are conditions for the material states. The ten casinas are conditions for the kinds of direct knowledge. Three divine abidings are conditions for the fourth divine abiding. Each lower immaterial state is a condition for each higher one. The base consisting of neither perception nor non-perception is a condition for the attainment of cessation. All are conditions for living in bliss for insight and for the fortunate kinds of becoming. This is as to condition. As to suitability to temperament, here the exposition should be understood according to what is suitable to the temperaments. That is to say, first, the ten kinds of foulness and mindfulness occupied with the body are eleven meditation subjects suitable for one of greedy temperament. The four divine abidings and four color casinas are eight suitable for one of hating temperament. Mindfulness of breathing is the one meditation subject suitable for one of deluded temperament and for one of speculative temperament. The first six recollections are suitable for one of faithful temperament. Mindfulness of death, the recollection of peace, the defining of the four elements, and the perception of repulsiveness in nutriment are four suitable for one of intelligent temperament. The remaining casinas and the immaterial states are suitable for all kinds of temperament, and any one of the casinas should be limited for one of speculative temperament and measureless for one of deluded temperament. This is how the exposition should be understood here as to suitability to temperament. All this had been stated in the form of direct opposition and complete suitability, but there is actually no profitable development that does not suppress greed etc., and help faith, and so on. And this is said in the Megaya Sutta. One should, in addition, develop these four things. Foulness should be developed for the purpose of abandoning greed or lust. Loving kindness should be developed for the purpose of abandoning ill will. Mindfulness of breathing 
should be developed for the purpose of cutting off applied thought. Perception of impermanence should be cultivated for the purpose of eliminating the conceit "I am." Also, in the Rahula Sutta, in the passage beginning, develop loving kindness, Rahula. Seven meditation subjects are given for a single temperament. So instead of insisting on the mere letter, the intention should be sought in each instance. This is the explanatory exposition of the meditation subject referred to by the words "He should apprehend one meditation subject." Now the words "and he should apprehend" are illustrated as follows. After approaching the good friend. Of the kind described in the explanation of the words, then approach the good friend, the giver of a meditation subject. The meditator should dedicate himself to the blessed one, the enlightened one, or to a teacher, and he should ask for the meditation subject with a sincere inclination of the heart and sincere resolution. Herein. He should dedicate himself to the Blessed One, the Enlightened One, in this way. Blessed One, I relinquish this, my person, to you, for without having thus dedicated himself, when living in a remote abode, he might be unable to stand fast if a frightening object made its appearance, and he might return to a village abode. Become associated with laymen, take up improper search, and come to ruin. But when he has dedicated himself in this way, no fear arises in him if a frightening object makes its appearance. In fact, only joy arises in him as he reflects: Have you not wisely already dedicated yourself to the enlightened one? Suppose a man had a fine piece of khaki cloth, he would feel grief if it were eaten by rats or moths. But if he gave it to a bhikkhu needing robes, he would feel only joy. If he saw the bhikkhu tearing it up to make his patch cloak, and so it is with this. When he dedicates himself to a teacher, he should say. I relinquish this my person to you, venerable sir. For one who has not dedicated his person thus becomes unresponsive to correction, hard to speak to, and unamenable to advice. Or he goes where he likes without asking the teacher. Consequently, the teacher does not help him with either material things or the dharma. And he does not train him in the cryptic books. Failing to get these two kinds of help, he finds no footing in the dispensation, and he soon comes down to misconducting himself or to the lay state. But if he has dedicated his person, he is not unresponsive to correction, does not go about as he likes, is easy to speak to. And lives only in dependence on the teacher. He gets the twofold help from the teacher and attains growth, increase, and fulfillment in the dispensation. Like the elder Chula Pindapatika teases pupils. Three bhikkhus came to the elder. It seems one of them said, "Venerable sir." I am ready to fall from a cliff, the height of one hundred men, if it is said to be to your advantage. The second said, "Venerable sir, I am ready to grind away this body from the heels up, without remainder, on a flat stone, if it is said to be to your advantage." The third said, "Venerable sir." I am ready to die by stopping breathing, if it is said to be to your advantage.
observing. These bhikkhus are certainly capable of progress. The elder expounded a meditation subject to them. Following his advice, the three attain arahatship. This is the benefit in self-dedication. Hence, it was said above, dedicating himself to the blessed one, the enlightened one, or to a teacher. With a sincere inclination of the heart and sincere resolution, the meditator's inclination should be sincere in the six modes, beginning with non-greed, for it is one of such sincere inclination who arrives at one of the three kinds of enlightenment, according as it is said. Six kinds of inclination lead to the maturing of the enlightenment of the bodhisattvas, with the inclination to non-greed. Bodhisattvas see the fault in greed. With the inclination to non-hate, Bodhisattvas see the fault in hate. With the inclination to non-delusion, Bodhisattvas see the fault in delusion. With the inclination to renunciation, Bodhisattvas see the fault in house life. With the inclination to seclusion, Bodhisattvas see the fault in society. With the inclination to relinquishment, Bodhisattvas see the fault in all kinds of becoming and destiny. For stream enterers, once returners, non returners, those with cankers destroyed, that is, arahants, Pacheka Buddhas, and fully enlightened ones, whether past, future, or present, all arrive at the distinction peculiar to each by means of these same six modes. That is why he should have sincerity of inclination in these six modes. He should be wholeheartedly resolved on that. The meaning is that he should be resolved upon concentration, respect concentration, inclined to concentration, be resolved upon Nibbana, respect Nibbana, inclined to Nibbana. When with sincerity of inclination and wholehearted resolution in this way, he asks for a meditation subject, then a teacher who has acquired the penetration of minds can know his temperament by surveying his mental conduct, and a teacher who has not can know it by putting such questions to him as, What is your temperament? Or, what states are usually present in you? Or, what do you like bringing to mind? Or, what meditation subject does your mind favor? When he knows, he can expound a meditation subject suitable to that temperament. And in doing so, he can expound it in three ways. It can be expounded to one who has already learned the meditation subject by having him recite it at one or two sessions. It can be expounded to one who lives in the same place each time he comes, and to one who wants to learn it and then go elsewhere. It can be expounded in such a manner that is neither too brief nor too long. Herein, when first he is explaining the earth casina, there are nine aspects that he should explain. They are the four faults of the casina, the making of a casina, the method of development for one who has made it, the two kinds of sign, the two kinds of concentration, the seven kinds of suitable and unsuitable, the ten kinds of skill in absorption, evenness of energy, and the directions for absorption. In the case of the other meditation subjects, each should be expounded in the way appropriate to it. All this will be made clear 
in the directions for development. But when the meditation subject is being expounded in this way, the meditator must apprehend the sign as he listens. Apprehend the sign means that he must connect each aspect. Thus, this is the preceding clause. This is the subsequent clause. This is its meaning. This is its intention. This is the simile. When he listens attentively, apprehending the sign in this way, his meditation subject is well apprehended. Then, and because of that, he successfully attains distinction, but not otherwise. This clarifies the meaning of the words, and he must apprehend. At this point, the clauses approach the good friend. The giver of a meditation subject, and he should apprehend from among the forty meditation subjects one that suits his own temperament. Have been expounded in detail in all their aspects. The third chapter called the description of taking a meditation subject in the treatise on the development of concentration. In the path of purification, composed for the purpose of gladdening good people.